This is the Techno Camon 30 Pro 5G, and I've had it for about a week now. There is so much new stuff, I don't know where to start from. Okay, I guess we're starting with what's in the box. Techno did something different and new with the Camon 30 Pro 5G. If you didn't see the unboxing, the 30 Pro 5G comes bundled with Techno's Buds 3 for free. In an era where most are taking accessories out of the box, it's nice to see Techno still adding more stuff. I should add though that they did take out wired earphones, the ones we typically get, but hey, at least they replaced it with something better. I don't think anyone's going to be mad about that. The phone's design is also new. We have a circular camera module with what looks like three cameras. And then next to the camera module is a red dot and the dual flash. That red dot is called the breathing light and it has a couple different functions. When charging, when there's an incoming call, when using a countdown timer, when taking a picture, and also when recording video, the breathing light turns on. So it's not just there for aesthetics, it's also functional. I got my units in black. I think there are two other colors. The white one looks the prettiest, but yeah, I got sent black. Black is cool. It's simple, it's minimal. The rare has this marble patterned look and it's also matte. Well, most of it is. So overall, I think it looks okay. I mean, even when I posted the unboxing, everyone seemed to really like the black color. I don't think I saw any negative comments about the design. The only thing I'm not really a fan of is the case that it comes with. I would have preferred if it was transparent cause now it covers the whole design. So I don't think I would be using it. Another thing Techno probably thought we wouldn't be using is the headphone jack because it's gone. Last year, the Camon 20 Pro 5G had the headphone jack, but this year it's gone. Something else that is gone is expandable storage. So yeah, you can't use an SD card on here. The tray at the bottom is just for your SIM cards. But then again, I feel like most people wouldn't care because this phone comes with half a terabyte of storage. So it kind of makes up for it. So those are some of the things that they removed, but things like the in-display fingerprint sensor, the stereo speakers were retained. But as you've probably seen from the packaging or even from the phone itself, these stereo speakers are Dolby Atmos tuned. And as you probably guessed, they sound awesome. At the top, you notice something new, an IR blaster. So now with your Camon, you can control about 15 different types of home appliances. I use it to control my TV when I can't find the remote. The Camon 30 Pro 5G has a 6.78 inch 1080p AMOLED display. That isn't new. Its refresh rate though goes up to 144 hertz. That is new. If you watch a ton of phone reviews, then you probably hear 120 hertz a bunch of times because that's the typical max refresh rate most mid-range phones and even flagships have. So to see something higher here on the Camon, is pretty cool. Out of the box, it's set to 120 Hz. So you would have to manually change that to 144 Hz. Now, on the other hand, if you're someone who doesn't watch a ton of phone reviews and you're probably wondering what a refresh rate is, it's basically how smooth your display is. So the higher the refresh rate, the smoother the display is. Now, it might be hard to tell the difference between last year's 120 Hz display and this year's 144 Hz, but it is different and new. This Camon is also brighter. It goes up to 1,300 nits of peak brightness. So under direct sunlight, your phone would definitely be readable. The display, no doubt, is very solid. It's high resolution, it's AMOLED, it's super fluid, it's bright, and thanks to the smaller bezels and hole punch cutout, the display looks great. If I had to complain though, I would complain about two things. First would be symmetrical bezels or the absence of symmetrical bezels. The screen would look much nicer if the top, bottom and side bezels were all the same size. And it's not like this is bad or anything, but it would just look nicer if the bezels were symmetrical. The second would be size. This phone, is really tall. 
It sometimes is a struggle to use it one-handed. And although I get that a lot of people like big phones, I also think that there are people who would want something smaller. But then again, that's just what I think. I might be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is running on HiOS version 14 based on Android 14. Just like with XOS 14, the overall look of the UI is the same, but with some new features. One of them being color, which lets you choose the color of the UI elements on your phone, perhaps to match your wallpaper. You also get new wallpapers. You can create wallpapers manually using Color Art or Mondrian, which is under Live Wallpapers, or you can use AI. You type in a prompt, you pick a style, and it would generate a wallpaper. Under the Always On Display setting, there's this new style called Cute Pet. There are about five different pets to choose from. I kind of like the parrot. And then of course we have lock screen customization. I feel like I've said this a billion times already, but uh, yeah, you can edit the clock style, you can edit the font, you can edit what's on the lock screen, and then you could change the shortcuts on the lock screen. There are a bunch of ways to customize it. Going a bit away from customization, there's a feature in the camera app called AIGC Portrait. In simple terms, it creates an AI generated portrait of you. It uses your camera, takes about four different pictures, and then turns those photos to AI-generated portraits. Note that it requires an internet connection. We also have Techno's voice assistant, Ella. She's actually more than a voice assistant. She can do some really cool things like text summarization, writing enhancements, and even prompted writing using ChatGPT. Another new but not so new feature is something called Unlock Capture. When turned on, it would take a picture of anyone who tried and failed to unlock your phone. I also like the power off verification setting. That requires the phone password every time you try to shut down your phone. So there are a ton of software features on this phone. Honestly, I didn't cover up to half. HiOS 14 is packed. There's a lot to explore. And then with regards to software updates, there is no official word from Techno, but there's a pretty good chance we would be getting two years of software updates. So fingers crossed. When compared to the 20 Pro 5G, we get a pretty significant upgrade, about 45%. This new Camon uses the MediaTek Dimensity 8200 chipset. As of the time of recording this, there is no other mid-range phone with a better processor. This is better than the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus and the Samsung Galaxy A55 5G, and costs less than both of them. It also comes with 12 gigs of RAM and half a terabyte of storage. I believe that's the only configuration it comes in. So we get a really powerful chipset and a lot of RAM. And then when you pair that with the higher refresh rate display, this phone feels so snappy and fluid. It low key feels like a flagship. And then because of the 12 gigs of RAM, multitasking is just as good. And as if that wasn't enough, you do have the option to extend this 12 gigs to 24 using memory fusion. I honestly don't think you're going to need it, but you can. Okay, how about gaming? Well, it handles that really well too. Asphalt 9 is my go-to mobile game, and although it's not super graphic intensive, I think it's still a pretty heavy game. And when I played it, the Camon handled it like a champ. Same goes for another game I like to play, FC Mobile. While I was gaming, I didn't experience any overheating issues. The phone stayed cool, or at most, warm. And of course, gameplay was smooth. No lagging, just smooth. I must say, I'm really impressed with the performance of this phone. Arguably, the headline new feature would be the cameras, or at least the main camera. Earlier, I said it looks like it has three cameras on the rear, and technically, it does. There's a 50 megapixel main sensor, a 50 megapixel ultra wide sensor, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. What's cool about the main camera is that it's a Sony IMX890 sensor. I don't know if you know this, but a ton of flagships use Sony sensors. The S24 Ultra, the iPhone 15 Pros, 
they all use Sony sensors. Now, although the IMX890 isn't the sensor being used by flagships today, it still kind of gives you a close to flagship experience. I actually found myself taking more pictures because I knew the camera was good. So whether I'm eating, I would pull up my phone, take a picture of my food. I see a nice looking building. I pull up my phone, take a picture of that. Even trees, plants, random objects. I am just taking pictures. Whether it was day, whether it was night, pictures look good. I just kept taking and taking and taking. And you can probably see for yourself that the camera performed really well. Even the 50 megapixel selfie camera looks great. I actually think these could pass as flagship cameras. Let me know what you think though. So photos impressed me, it did, but so did video. The 30 Pro 5G can shoot up to 4K 60 FPS on both the rear and selfie camera. I'm someone that has always prioritized video quality over video resolution, but with this phone, you get both. I would say 4K 30 FPS is the sweet spot because you get 4K, but you also get stabilization. Safe to say video quality is just as impressive. One thing to note though is you have to turn off the beauty effects that are turned on by default. So when you open the camera app for both photo and video, you kind of want to turn off these settings. Unless of course you want them. The 30 Pro 5G has a big battery and fast charging. It has a 5000 mAh battery, which unless you're trying to kill this phone, should last you the entire day. You can expect seven hours of screen on time. You could even go up to eight or nine on lighter days. But the cool thing is it doesn't really matter because it has 70 watts of wired fast charging. It would take under one hour to get this phone from zero to 100%. So again, we have decent battery life and fast charging and the fast charger is giving to you for free. Nice. So like I said at the start of this video, there is a lot to talk about. And even at the end, there is still more stuff to talk about. But if I talk about every single thing, this video might be an hour long. The Canon 30 Pro 5G costs about 538,000 or around $400. So obviously for that price, you would expect to get a ton of features, a ton of stuff. You would want to feel like your money was well spent. And I think with the Canon and all the features and things it comes with, I think you would feel that way. The design, the display, the performance, the cameras, the battery life, they're all good. And then it's cheaper than the competition. I think if Techno can guarantee those two years of software updates, then this might actually be a very strong contender for best mid-range phone for this year. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Techno Camon 30 Pro 5G. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you when you see me.